A 14 year old young man is selling hundreds of cutting boards and other woodworking projects in his hometown. You're gonna love hearing his story. He's gonna join us next. And if you stick around to the end, he doesn't know it, but he's gonna get surprised with some really awesome tools to help him in his woodworking business, courtesy of 731. Let's go. I'd like to welcome Noah here from Woodworking by Noah Golden. He's a young man who started his own woodworking business and is having good success. Noah, welcome. Mr. Noah, what inspired you to pursue woodworking and how did you get started with a woodworking business? Well, I was I was actually in the hospital with migraines and I was, I mean, I was on YouTube, I didn't have anything to do. And I was actually stumbled across one of your videos and started watching it and, uh, you know, we had done some stuff. We redid our lake house and I was like, man, I probably can do that. Yeah. So uh, I went out and actually the first thing I did, I built my mom some end tables and it was based off your end table design. Yeah. And so I did that and I enjoyed it. And so I just kept doing it. Did that turn into a business for you? Yes, sir. Now I'm doing a lot more cutting boards and a lot of different stuff. So the cutting boards you're making, what are you making those out of? Um, I use all different kinds of wood, red oak, paduke, purple heart, walnut, maple, cherry, you know, all your classic hardwoods mm -hmm. and some exotics. And those are selling good for you? Oh uh, yes, sir, they're selling very well. Good. So what sets your cutting boards apart from those that are in your market? How are you, how are you differentiating yourself in your business? I do all of myself. I use the highest quality hardwoods, pay very good attention to detail. I yeah. spend as much time as possible on every board. So they have a little bit of your character into that board? Yes, sir, they do. Awesome. What techniques and materials do you use in woodworking and how have you developed or honed your skills over time? You know, you just kind of got to mess with it. You know, at first, my first board wasn't too great. I mean, I didn't have the planer at that time and you just kind of got sand for two hours, <laughs> it seems like. Yeah on every board. So, I mean, I developed a process where I do it all in batches. I don't do one at a time. And, yeah, and that speeds up everything. It speeds it up a considerable amount. That way you don't have to pull out your finish for every board, put it up, pull out your sander again. You can do it all at once. So it's, basically you, you adapt and overcome to the situation that's being presented to you. You, you, saw, you saw those were selling for you and then you you say, well, I can make more if I make more, I make more, right? If you yes, make sir. more boards, you make more money. That's exactly right. The largest batch I've done is about 35. I've oh, noticed. wow. If I get over that, it just gets too cumbersome. Yeah. And it's... you're doing most of this work yourself? Uh, all of it, yes, oh, sir. Yeah. Well, everything except running the table saw. And I recently bought a man saw. I don't have to do that anymore. Oh, nice. So I do everything myself except run the table saw. That's fantastic. One question I have for a lot of young people who, especially like you, are actually running a woodworking business, the profitable business. How do you balance woodworking and schoolwork? Well, this year I'm actually homeschooled, but last year um, I just, in my free time, you know, whatever Saturdays I have off, I also play a lot of baseball, so that takes some Saturdays. Yeah. And so, you know, after church on Sunday, every moment I can get to woodwork, I use it. Yeah, so you're not all business and no play because you're playing baseball, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> it's good, it's good to have a balance in your life. I'll yes, tell you sir. that from personal experience because if you, all you do is work, then that takes over your life. It's good to have that outlet of baseball. I love baseballs, and I've always been a fan of baseball, so it's a good outlet for you. What's the biggest challenge you faced running your woodworking business so far? It's just, you know, just learning new stuff, you know, getting used to new tools and that sort of thing. Like when you have a big mess up making cutting boards, say yeah. something d lambs or just messes up, it's kind of frustrating, but it's just getting used to different things. Yeah. How do you market and promote your woodworking products? Just Facebook right now, word of mouth. I mean, that's... But you were telling me earlier about going to a... Um, oh, yes. We also, I do local festivals and that sort of thing. Craft show type thing? Yes, sir. And we have a wine festival next month. This will be my second wine festival. Junior League, that's um, festivals that just a vendor selling that sort of thing. The festivals do good for you? You sell good stuff at festivals? Yes, sir. I do pretty well there. Awesome. What has been your most successful project to date and what made it successful? Probably the epoxy charcuterie boards, just because they're so different. And there's yeah. nobody in my local area doing those. Oh, really? Yes, sir. There's, oh, that's good. There's not anybody. I mean, it's they're kind of hard to learn at first, and it's yeah, definitely scary tricky. dumping, you know, fifty dollars <laughs> worth of epoxy in yeah, one yes. board. So old logging told me when I went up there that they sell a bunch of those around the holidays. Yes, sir. So I'm not sure if you're marketing those during that time of year, uh, but it may be a good idea for you. 
Yes, sir. I usually, that's what I did this year. I did like four um, local craft shows or festivals around that time. Yeah. And I sold out, sold 110 cutting boards. Wow. And three epoxy shark. Oh, well, actually, I sold three during that area, but somebody ordered three more, so I sold about six. Man, I'm telling you what, that is impressive. Those are impressive sales numbers. I'm telling you, you're, you're doing good. That is 110 cutting boards. Yes, sir. That's a lot of work. All right, so how have you been able to manage the finances and accounting for your woodworking business and uh, any tips you'd give other young people doing this? Just handle it. <laughs> so it, so I'm asking this. So when you're making money, you're making profits, what do you do with the money? Is your parents handling that money for you and trying to help you figure out how to best allocate that to new tools? Oh, or? no. I So I reinvest everything back into the business and I obviously pay taxes on right. it. Right. And then... Um, yeah, so I bought a new bandsaw, I bought a track saw, just reinvesting it and Getting helping speed up my processes is smart. normally how I handle it. Yeah, that's how I did it, that's how I built mine. I started out with a borrowed saw and a drill, and then every time I would build and make a little bit of money that was profit, then I would just reinvest tools until I got to where I could build what I wanted to build with the tools I had. So smart. What advice would you give other young people who are interested in pursuing woodworking and starting their own business. I mean, just don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's, I mean, I had an incident, uh, it was actually the day before yesterday where I was cutting the holes for a cornhole board set and the bit snapped and it dug all through oh. my, the set, set that I had just made. So, <laughs> but it ended up, you know, I was frustrated. I didn't think there was any way I'd be able to save it, but I was able to sand it out. Yeah. And so I'd be able to salvage it. And even if I wasn't, you know, I can go rebuild it. Yeah. So. so my wife always says it's made of wood, it's not set in stone, right? Yeah. So, and that's one of the things I love about woodworking is it challenges you, even experienced woodworkers, when they mess up, they have to figure out how to fix that. And it's a challenge. And I think that's what a lot of us love about it. So as a young person, have you faced any negative stereotypes from like older people thinking you couldn't do something because you're young? Have you yeah. saw that? Yes. So actually, um, well, one of our family friends, there was another woodworker at a local festival and he, uh, they were over at his booth and they didn't know they know us. Yeah. So he basically said his parents do all that and use him as marketing, which <laughs> you shouldn't see my dad try to build stuff. It's not pretty. Uh -oh. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't look good. Yeah. So she, ba <sighs> she said, no, that's not true. And then anyway, so somehow he ended up, um, complaining about something uh, some of the people run the festival and really was, but ended up all getting sorted out oh my goodness people can be crazy sometimes now, in your opinion what what role do you think young people can play in shaping the future of woodworking or business i mean just innovation coming up with new ideas different ideas that yeah. sort of thing fresh ideas yes fresh fresh eyes on things that like, some of those older people may not think about. Somebody had to invent the CNC, somebody yep. invented table saws, that sort of thing. Yeah. So you think later in life you may start thinking about tools that you could invent that would uh, maybe change the game? Potentially, I guess. Yeah. I don't, I've never really thought about it. but I mean. yeah. So future plans for you, what are you, what are you thinking for yourself as far as college or profession or what are you thinking? Uh, obviously going to go to college. I don't really have a plan after that. Yeah. I may go to get a master's in, you know, law or get a doctorate or something. Yeah. I'm not really sure yet. Awesome. Well, Noah, do you have a power <laughs> tip for us? Just, just keep trying different stuff. A lot of it won't work. Tried to do 50 coasters the other day. They did not work. Uh oh, 50 of them failed? All 50? Yeah. <laughs> uh, they decided they wouldn't work after I did the right last one. So uh -oh. it is what it is. Yeah. So. It's, it's trial and error. You don't know until you try, right? Yeah, and I was on a deadline. I was probably trying to rush it a little bit yeah. too much. That hell, that hurts every one of us when we get yes, in a hurry. Definitely. Physically and with materials. Before we move on, if this content is bringing you value, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon next to it, and then click all so you get notified of all the new content I've got coming. All right, Mr. Noah is 14 years old. He's a beginning woodworker. I say beginning. He's into this three years now. Two, About three. Two, almost three. And as you know, I've been blessed with the many things in my life and uh, on this channel. And the only way to uh, do that is to pay it forward. I'd like to give you this saw stop, and uh, that way you can start hopefully using the table saw. Are you serious? Yep. There's no way. If you'll accept it. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay. You good? Yes, sir. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I, I know how important it is to be safe, okay? And I also know how it feels to be given things 
even though sometimes we're like, I, I, I can't accept it. But uh, again, I think that uh, you're doing a lot of good work. You're doing hard work. And I would love to see you have something like this to help you work a little safer. Yes, sir. That's, that's awesome. Oh my gosh. So that's yours. Blade, new brake. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Wow. And I talked to Carbide 3D and uh, they sent me the new Shape Echo 5. And I asked them, I said, can I give this Shape Echo 4 to my friend Noah? And they've agreed to let me do that. So I'm gonna give, bless you with this CNC, give you a couple of bits to get started. All you need is a laptop and you'll be on your way to start making stuff with CNC. You can custom engrave your cutting boards, your charcuterie boards, and do some, start doing some custom work. Can I do that? I guess. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Oh my. You serious? Yep, I'm dead serious. It's yours. It'll cut 29 by 29 inches up to probably a couple, two, three inches thick. Maybe more than that. That's, oh, that's awesome, thank you. You're welcome. This will get you going. I'm gonna give you some clamps to get started. You'll have bits to get started. Like I said, all you need is a, a laptop. If you go to my.carbide3d.com, there's free training on there and it'll teach you how to run this machine. And you'll be well on your way to making whatever you can dream of. That's, that's, oh my gosh. <laughs> Just at a loss of words. Yeah, that's, that's all right. I worked with that with your parents before they came, so they kind of knew you was getting it. That's crazy. A good secret keep. Awesome. If you have room for it. Now. I, I, I have room. <laughs> Uh, I'll make room. Yeah. If that doesn't inspire you, I have no idea what will. Thank you, Noah. He gave me one of his creations. This is one of his cutting boards off camera. I greatly appreciate that. Thank you to his parents for bringing him over and let me meet him. If you're in the Texarkana, Texas area, check out Noah Golden Woodworking in the area and get you a nice little cutting board, charcuterie board, and many other creations he's making. If you like this video, click that box right there. It's going to take you to another video you're going to love. Click that box. It's a big old virtual fist bump. Also, another one of my videos right there. Noah, fist bump just for you, man.